Ben McKee and Patrick Brown of GoVols 24-7 here with our no huddle on Monday of Kentucky week. Tennessee coming off of its second open week of the season. A lot of talk last week about needing to handle the open week better than it did the first time when it beat Oklahoma, had an open week, then lost to Arkansas. A lot of talk even amongst ourselves about that last week. But now it's kind of amplified because you start looking down the road and into the month of November. Saturday's game will be in November, five games in the month. And next Tuesday, we'll have college football playoff rankings. So Josh Heupel asked about that today on top of coming out of an open week. And I love Josh Heupel's thoughts is that none of that matters because if you get too caught up in thinking too far down the road, then you're going to end up making mistakes in the here and now. And that starts with how you play on Saturday. And Saturday is how you can make the biggest message in regards to your college football playoff resume. Yeah, Ben, you are what your record says you are. You are what, what, your, what the tape says, right? The tape, the eye in the sky never lies, whatever, whatever you want to say, whatever cliche you want to use. But Josh Heibel's right. I mean, he, he was asked who's going to determine Tennessee's standing in this large jumbled mess of 20 some odd teams that are still uh, in the mix for one of those 12 college football playoff spots. And he said, we do, because it's how we play. I think Tennessee is going to need style points. Uh, they can't, you know, they had an overtime game against Florida. They can't be having overtime games against Kentucky and playing Mississippi State close. They need to win those games comfortably. They need to be impressive. They, I think they probably need to show some progress on offense because that's probably the biggest question mark with this team right now. Um, and, and they've got to go to Georgia and play well. And so, you know, Heifel is very routine based. He wants to keep his team's focus on the here and the now and not get too far out. Uh, he obviously wants them playing meaningful games with high stakes and you know, have a November stretch where they're in the conversation for the playoff and the SEC title and those things, but you have to be able to manage that territory and uh, we'll have to see if, if Tennessee has the, the maturity or the competitive composure is a phrase that he likes to use to be able to handle having to play well. I mean, Kentucky's coming here on three game, you know, on a three game losing streak. They got nothing to lose. They're just trying to play spoiler. Um, and, and, you know, so the pressure's on you and you got to deliver and, and you can't go out there and struggle and uh, do some of the things you've been doing because you, you need to impress and, and you need to look good doing it. You may hear some noise around us and it's like they're doing some work over to the practice field off to our right. Uh, it, it might be a precursor of things to come this Saturday night inside of Neyland Stadium. Dark mode jerseys were announced this morning. It is a rivalry game. Josh Heupel, that was the first thing he said today when he met with the media. Uh, and, and I agree with him. I think it is a rivalry game because of the hate between the two teams, even if it is a lopsided rivalry. It's going to be loud inside of that building on Saturday. And it's a Kentucky team that is really struggling right now. And I do agree with you. Like Kentucky has nothing to lose. But this Kentucky team has not looked like the Kentucky teams we've become accustomed to seeing under Mark Stoops. They don't play as hard as they have in the past. Their effort is very questionable. They, they just, I mean, that was the one thing you could always count on with Kentucky is you knew they were going to show up and give you their best punch, give you their best fight. And that hasn't been the case this year. And I think a guy that's really licking his chops this week is Dylan Sampson. Yeah, I mean, Jarquez Hunter for Auburn ran for, I believe, 278 on him. Uh, Hugh Freeze was talking today about how he kind of wanted to throw the ball in the second half and was just like, nah, we're just going to keep handing it off. And uh, even though Kentucky was loading up the box and, and it was kind of stunning to watch that game, obviously, we, you know, we got a chance to probably watch it because Tennessee was not playing. And so to see, you know, Kentucky's defense under Mark Stoops, their identity under Mark Stoops has been tough, hard-nosed defense. Uh, they've never been good on offense under him, but they've always played pretty good defense. Uh, and they, Auburn was just running basic off tackle plays. And, a bad Auburn offense. And, and, you know, an offensive line that was moving guys around. And Auburn had won a game in the league all season. And uh, it was kind of shocking. And so you look at, you know, Kentucky went to Ole Miss earlier this season and executed a perfect, frustrate, a tempo offense game plan. Uh, won a low scoring game. They played Georgia within a point. Could have won that game early in the season. But since then, they lost to Florida. Uh, it was the other one they lost. Lost to Vanderbilt, then lost at home to Auburn. So, um, and obviously, I think Mark Stoops is dealing with the loss of his mother as yeah. well. So, uh, obviously, that's a tough situation personally for him too. Um, but you know, that, the team is not playing well. But they're going to get up for this game, right? I mean, this is you this think is, this is uh, this is a big rivalry game, and so uh, Tennessee needs to start well, which they haven't done on offense in, in several games. So, um, it, it, if you're able to start well, keep the crowd in it, it could be like it was a couple of years ago with the dark mode game, and it got out of hand. But uh, yeah, Kentucky has, you know, if that defense goes, I don't know what else they have. They don't have a quarterback. Uh, they're beat up in the backfield, too. So uh, a lot of things are pointing to Tennessee in this game, but Tennessee still needs to go handle its business. Yeah, last thing we'll touch on here before we get out of here, there, there wasn't much 
to talk about from Heifel today that is kind of get in and, and get out. There, there just wasn't, I guess, coming off a second case bye week. the Mondays. Man. Yes, it, it certainly was. But one talking point, I guess, was Mike Matthews was asked about, again, the freshman receiver that everybody is kind of wondering, where is he at? Why can he not help this up and down receiver room a, a little bit more? And uh, Josh Heifel said that he's going to have an opportunity to potentially be a part of what they're doing in the second half of the season. Yeah, it was interesting to me. He said that there were some situations where he thought Matthews could execute better when he's on the field, and some of that was on him, and some of that was elsewhere. Maybe the quarterback, maybe you know, whatever this, that, and the other. I have to go back and really watch it. But yeah, I mean, when you have a five-star freshman and, and you see guys like Jeremiah Smith and Cam Coleman and Ryan Williams making all these plays, you're, you're as Tennessee, you're like, okay, our passing game's not very good. Why can't we inject this guy? I mean, it's just natural. Uh, it's, it's not like the backup quarterback situation, but you know, the backup quarterback's always the most popular guy on the team. It's not like that, but it's kind of like that. So, um, but you know, we'll see if Matthews can carve out a role. I mean, he he's an outside guy, so he he's kind of battling Brew, McCoy, Chris Brazel, Dante Thornton. Those guys have been a little up and down, um, but they're you know they know what they're going to get from those guys. And uh, Tennessee just needs uh, they just need to make some connections on some of these plays. Uh, they need to make some of those big plays. Obviously, Dante Thornton has made most of the ones he's gotten. Um, but you know they need to, you know those, those misses need to be connections for this offense to kind of become more well-rounded, not so Dylan Sampson heavy, you know, relying on him so much. So uh, we'll see if Matthews gets. I think he'll probably get, you know, the same 10, 15 snaps. I don't know. Do you know what he played against Alabama? No, uh, I don't recall. Right. So uh, he, he's getting on the field I think a little it was like bit. Like four or five snaps. He, he needs to get on the field a little bit. I, I would like to see him when he does get on the field. Just throw, just throw it out there to him. Just throw him a screen. Let him do something after the catch. It's not that hard. That shouldn't be a playbook issue, but. Um, you know, and just see if he can give you a spark and give you some yak that you've also not been getting either. Absolutely. We've got plenty of coverage of Tennessee, Kentucky all week long at GoBalls247.com. Kickoff 7.45 p.m. Eastern on Saturday night on the SEC Network. He's Patrick Brown. I'm Ben McKee.